Well, here we are again for Small Business Show 247. It's uh, almost Halloween, Wednesday, October 30th, uh, 2019, my, my friend. Yeah, it is. And uh, I'm Shannon Jean coming to you from the West Coast. Oh, that's right. I'm Dave Hamilton coming to you from the <laughs> East Coast. You know, yeah. um, we so we have a show about simplicity that that uh, that I, actually I'm really excited to share. But, but we not, we're not sure how we're doing these intros as as longtime listeners have probably noticed we're doing these intros a little bit differently. I have a tip to share that I, I figured was good for this intro. Just we'll see how we like it. And if, if you like this stuff, let us know feedback at business show.co. But I was talking with a, um, a service provider this week, a new partner for us at Mac observer, somebody actually to manage all of what we call our remnant ads, the things that we don't sell. There's, there's, you know, inventory left over and they have a pretty good offering. Uh, they've been courting us actually for a long time, but you know, we just recently sort of dug in with them and realized, Oh yeah, that they would that, like a, a service like this would be a really good thing. And so they gave me their pitch and showed me how it worked. We probably spent, you know, a, the 30, 40 minutes on a video conference call together. And I had met them too. They, you know, I was out on the West coast and met with them while I was out there and that sort of thing. And they kind of got to the end of the pitch and it's like, well, this, it, it, uh, quite honestly, I, I think we'd be stupid not to do this. Right. Like that's the reality of, of okay. all of this. I, I, you know, they, they have people and systems they've built that are going to actively manage stuff, manage this stuff for us on a, you know, far more frequent basis, like thousands of times more frequent than we would be able to manage it, which would be like once a quarter, you, you know, like this is it. And, and because it's being actively managed, we're probably going to be able to maximize things. We'll actually be able to show our, our users less ads and make more nice. money. Right. Like Sounds it's great. all, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's the thing is it's like, okay. So I asked him, I'm like, you know, you guys probably pitched this to lots of different publishers. Why would someone not choose to work with you i said i know at this point in the game some people definitely walk away why and after i said it it was like what a perfect question to ask i'm putting this in the arsenal i'm going to use this anytime i possibly can because they gave me an honest answer they explained okay you know that's a really good question and and they you know they were honest about the type of business for whom this doesn't necessarily work and why and all of that stuff and it made perfect sense to me. Uh, now, did they give me the whole answer? Probably not. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily, but you can feel out like how, what types of people are these, you know, how honest are they going to be? Because you know, they've had people say no, everyone in business. Right. Yeah, like, of course. Right. So I just thought That's it a was good a question tip to, to share. Yeah. It was a good question to ask. Why would someone not work with you? It, you yeah, know, that's great. And you got to get, you got to get to a point where they feel like, you trust them, you know, like there needs to be that mutual trust. You can't ask that necessarily in the first five minutes that you're talking to somebody about their service, like, cause they're just going to get, they're going to take it the wrong way. Potentially. Yeah. They get a little defensive. They'll get a little like defensive. That, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like, it was more like, okay, this seems too good to be true, which it quite frankly does, but only because we haven't addressed this problem internally kind of with the right amount of attention. So it's like, you know, there's, there's a massive upside here, which is great. You know, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. So anyway, I just wanted to share that little, that I like little it. nugget, that little tidbit yeah, of wisdom. Good. Yeah. That's what we do here, right? We're trying to share, uh, tips and tricks and that's techniques yeah. and, uh, whether they're ours or somebody else's. It doesn't we're matter. Talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter. No, yeah. it doesn't matter. We can all learn. Trying to Im yeah. Improve the small business, uh, ecosystem, right? There you go. There you go. Yeah. So, so today we're going to talk about, uh, simplicity and I'm looking forward to it. And I think it ties in well with that uh, story uh, episode we recently mm. did. And, yeah, for uh, sure. I'm looking forward to chatting about it. All right. Well, here we go. It's like this is this is who we are. Does it communicate who you are? Yes. Done. That's your that's your goal. And and that's the thing is you have to choose the prime directive, right? What are you trying to say? Say it. Don't worry yeah. about anything else just say it and now did they get it yes okay now you can talk to them more now they understand what your business does now they can ask you questions why are you, right. how are you different from netflix in your business ah right now i've got you on the hook now we can talk now we're having a conversation yeah
All right, Dave. I'm excited about doing this show because we're gonna. It's going to be a really simple show. We're going to talk all about simplicity. Oh, it sounds simple. Perfect. Yeah, it's gonna be good. It's yeah. gonna be good. It sounds uh, easy. I, I think <laughs> it is. It should be very easy, right? <laughs> and uh, I think it ties in pretty well with our our uh, episode we did last week on story and how important that is. And we got some great responses from that. And uh, so I thought we we just talk about simplicity. And you know, when you read about simplicity, usually uh, I see it kind of wrapped around marketing messages. How simple marketing messages resonate you know, with our customers, uh, allow you to quickly connect with the customer, promote your brand. I mean, some of the greatest ones, obviously like just do it, you know, from Nike think different from Apple, uh, you know, Verizon had that. Can you hear me now guy? Although he's flipped now and there's a sprint. (laughs) sprint I I was, I always thought that was a (laughs) risky one for Verizon. It's like, you know, the, because your customers, you, when we write headlines, Right. You never want to ask a yes or no question because your customer might say oh. no. Yeah. What if they say no? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But I think Verizon had, if, if I was going to say one thing they have, and I'm not a Verizon customer, but they have a depth of the, their network penetrates really well. So, it does. so I think yeah. they must have realized that and said, okay, well we can lean on this a little bit. Oh and, yeah. I'm uh, sure this was yeah. not a, a, uh, you know, something they just pulled out of a hat. Like they, yeah. they felt yeah. this was a calculated risk. And yes, in fact, right. here, what we're doing right here goes against simplicity because if you're trying to make a point, you don't want to start making three other Digging points at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah going so, off on a tangent. Yeah. yeah you're tangents right. are bad well, for good. simplicity. And when you tell a story, you need like the best thing you can do with your stories is choosing what to leave out. Yeah. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. There you go. I, I, I think that this power of simplicity, though, you know, it goes way beyond marketing. And uh, so a few things I want to talk about today to, I think, help our small businesses succeed is there's three areas that I think simplicity is really important. And uh, on the show today, we want to talk about getting started. We okay. want and customer choice and keeping it simple on the inside. So we're going to start here with when we're getting started. Okay. Uh, and I think that the whole concept of your business, especially in the beginning, whether you're launching a new product, a new service, whatever you're getting into, it needs to be simplified, narrow your focus so you can get out the door, get started and test your concept. Uh, you know, this allows you to get up and running quickly and then iterate and make quick changes. And, you know, I think it's really easy to get stuck in this uh, first startup phase. And I believe we all know people that are perpetually tr- just on the edge of success and getting started, um, adding too many new features to a product. We've talked about this you know, tons of times on the show, uh, just one more thing before we can launch one more thing. Well, that's the same concept, and right? I mean, choose what to leave out, what to it's leave out. Same, exactly. It's the same thing. Yep. Yeah. 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 And you know, I have in my notes here, you know, spend as much time saying no during the startup phase as you do saying yes. I would, I would correct that for, okay. for me because I'm, I'm kind of crazy. I have to say no to more things than I say yes to. Um, no, I, I agree. But I think what, you know, I, I always try to wrap this around this power of yes. I mean, we've done shows on, hey, em, em, embrace the possibilities, say yes more, da, 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 da. So I always just want to point out, you also have to put as much effort and in your case, maybe more into that, that, uh, that no. So you can narrow things down and keep it simple. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right. And, yeah. 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 And, and I think that what happens in and I've seen it before and it, it's happened to me too is, you know, it's often fear of the unknown fear of failure that keeps us kind of introducing new things to keep us from getting started, you know, it, it, in our oh, subconscious. Definitely. Oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. You don't, right. you don't want to, it, when you release something, you, well, I see, I always look at here. I am on the tangent again, but this is what we it's do right. here. Yeah. 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 Uh, I've always looked at those two things as the same, right? Fear of failure and fear of fear of success. Both of those lead to change, right? If you ship yeah. your product, you 
like now you're done building it. You might iterate on it down the road or whatever, but like there is a change happening. Failure is, of course, another change. And so I think it's the fear of change that yeah, is that's true. That is at the root of both of those. At least that's true for me. Y- you know, yep. I can only speak. I've only got one brain that I've ever been allowed to be inside. And, and arguably, I'm not even allowed to be inside my own, but I've worked out a, a lease. So it's all good. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's right. And, and it's true. I mean, I recently published a book up on Amazon about my, uh, you know, experience selling on marketplaces. And I had the whole thing built. I mean, it took a long time to get it through this whole uh, process to push it out to the Kindle app and all this stuff. And, you know, it sat in that app for a few days and I just kept tweaking to And finally I was like, you know what? I just have to push the button to publish it. (laughs) <laughs> it, it was scary, you know, because like, gosh, I'm going to be judged. You know, if what if I made a mistake? What if I, I'm sure I made mistakes? What if sure. grammar errors? I'm, I know I made grammar errors, but you know what? I was, you know, it's like, okay, I just have to do it, and you know, uh, you, you just get it out there. And and I think that's when I realized um, that often just holds us back. Um, and you know, along the same side, you have to kind of avoid this perfection trap, right? You comes back to create this minimal viable product minimally. Is that right? Yeah, minimally oh. viable product uh, or service to get started. Yeah. Right? If if you if you're just trying to make it perfect, you're going to do it. It's going to take forever. You'll never get it out of the gate because there is no such thing. No. Well, I mean, it, it, you know, there's a, a phrase that I'm sure I'll butcher, but it's you know, perfection is the enemy of good, right? Or good, good is the perfection is the enemy of. Yeah, good, I guess. Something I don't know. Like There's yeah. something I in know. there. I yeah. Yeah. But you know, if you're constantly chasing uh per, yeah, it's perfection's the enemy of good or perfection's yeah. the enemy of progress, right? Is another way something to look like at that. it. Yeah, I think yeah. that's probably right. Yeah. 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 But it that's the problem is, you know, you can tweak and tweak and tweak and it never like you could still be tweaking your book. And I guarantee you, if you go and re- read it this afternoon. You oh. will find yet another thing where you'd be like, oh, dang it. I just did. Yeah. I'm creating this course with some of the content and I pulled on them all. Oh, I left that out. And da, da, da. <laughs> you know, I have this. Yeah. It's just, it's just going to always be that way. And you're always our, our worst critic. Yeah. Uh, and we're hardest on ourselves, our inner judge. Right. So it's, it's important to understand that those are tools uh, to help you, you know, get, be better and create a better product or better service. But don't get overwhelmed with that. And, and no, it's uh, okay that, to you fail. Know. I, yeah. You know, when I was a, 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 a wee lad and uh, was playing in my first band and, you know, we're in the basement or whatever, and we're rehearsing and we're like, okay, you know, we, we should play out, but we don't want to book a gig until we're, you know, we know we've got it together. And a friend of ours in a band that was already playing out, I think he was a few years older or whatever, you know, certainly was more experienced. And so we looked up to him, this guy, John, and he was like, Guys, you, you got to play out before you're ready like that. That mm-hmm. You have to make the decision that you will play out yeah. before you're ready. It's like because you will never be ready until You'll after ready. you've played five yes. gigs. He's like, you need yeah. to go figure out what kind of band you are on stage. It doesn't matter what happens here in the rehearsal room. And it was like, oh, yeah. that's right. that's a really good. That's a, that's a good metaphor. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and I think sometimes, you know, if you're talking about messaging and, you you know, with your business, uh is there a metaphor that you can use to describe what you do? Right. Or some, you know, some example, you know, can, number one, I, I'm, can you explain your business or what value you're bringing in a sentence or two? Yeah. What's you know, your elevator you to, pitch? Yeah. What is it? You, know, you want to avoid this word salad, right? And you want to practice it when you're talking to people. Uh, so it just rolls right off the tongue and, you know, you might use it in an example. Like I, I've been listening to, uh, this podcast called startup and it's all about uh, Gimlet, which is a company that uh, produced podcasts. I know Gimlet, things. you know, Gimlet <laughs> yeah, recently oh, yeah. bought by Spotify yeah. uh, for a couple hundred million dollars. And so uh, there, when, when this guy uh, got started, his things are, Oh, I want to be the HBO of podcasts. Great. Great. I get it. I get it. You want to build, you know, this kind of thing. So think about that. Is there a, uh, an example, some kind of metaphor that you can use? You want to be the Uber of whatever you want to be, you know, I don't the, the that, Netflix that of, The Netflix of X has become yeah. a thing for subscription yeah. services. Like, cause that's right. They've got a good one. Yeah. Yeah. So that could help you and that could help describe to people what you do. Yeah, it's okay I, I, I to compare yourself all. to somebody else. I, I, I had to yeah. go through a long time. It was like, oh yeah, no, it's just like, this is. This is who we are. Does it communicate who you are? Yes. 
Done. That's your, that's your goal. And, and that's the thing is you have to choose the pot prime directive, right? What are you trying to say? Say it. Don't worry yeah. about anything else. Just say it. And now did they get it? Yes. Okay. Now you can talk to them more. Now they understand what your business does. Now they can ask you questions. Why are you, right. how are you different from Netflix and your business? Ah, right now I've got you on the hook. Now we can talk. Now we're having a conversation. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, and, and there's that that power of association, especially yeah. with a giant successful company, right? Like Netflix. So you're you're instantly associating your small business with you know success, and that's what you want to do. Uh, you're persuading people all the time. Every time you talk about it, whether it's an investor, a vendor, a customer, your employees, it's it's all about the pitch. You're really. Uh, selling, you know, you're selling yourself. I, I had dinner this last weekend with some friends and uh, the woman that we were, one of the women that we were with, very successful salesperson, sells incredibly complicated uh, IT infrastructure stuff. Sure. But she, she says, no, I'm, I'm, I'm the product. I, I'm, I'm, I sell myself. I'm the product. And that's how she gets, <laughs> yeah, that's how she's so successful is she makes, she understands that anybody's all kinds of companies sell this IT stuff and this and connecting and all these things, but she is the product that she presents to her customers yeah. and builds that relationship with. And I really thought that was some great, you know, insight. It wow. sounds, it, it's simple. I am the product. I'm the product. And I, th I would say as, as a small business owner, you're you the, product the product too. Yeah. And you're selling yourself all the time, whether it's like I said, to customers, vendors, suppliers, and don't forget your employees, other people that you're trying to persuade to get on this journey with you, uh, to have the same attitude and, you know, embrace this mission that you're creating, you know, your story, if you will. Right. Yeah. You're, you're trying to get them on board. So you're constantly talking and, uh, you know, coming up with a simple way to say, here's where we're going. That's not this word salad, you know, five paragraph thing. No, it's got, you know, one or two sentences. This is what we're going to achieve. And I think it's powerful. I think, I think it works really well. Yeah. That's fascinating. Yeah. 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 I am so, the product. I'm still, I'm still sort of unpacking that. It, it's so yeah. true. I, I, I didn't plan on, on discussing that, but as I, as we were walking through this and I was talking about this, you know, it, it just kind of came to me when, uh, when I was at this dinner and this, this woman, you know, Tanya, uh, that I'm good friends with. And she said that, and I was just like, wow, man, that is, that's why you're so successful. That's it. She, and she knows it like that. Yep. Like, and I always say people, every decision someone makes is an emotional decision. Right. And, and I, and I get pushback on this all the time. People are like, well, you know, especially buying decisions, a hundred percent of them are emotional. And, and I, if you want to argue with me about it, like I love, I love discussing this. It doesn't even have to be an argument. Feedback at business I would love to go through it, but here's my pitch on this. You know, the, the final moment where you are making that decision to, yes, I'm going to spend my money on this or not. You have to feel good about making that decision. That is an emotional moment. Now you might use spreadsheets to make you feel better Right. I've done my research. There's numbers to support why this is a good thing. I'm going to I feel good about this. I'm going to do it. Right. And there might be other reasons. There could be a million reasons, it could, but it could also be I like the person or people that I'm dealing with. I want to continue dealing with them. So I'm going to make this purchase, you know, and yeah. it 100 percent of the time it comes down to an emotional thing. If somebody has a great product and they uh, show up at your door and they're a jerk, the way they tr treat you and all of that stuff. Even if, you know, your spreadsheets and everything else says that's the product you want, you're going to be hesitant and that's emotion and you might yeah. have to temper that. And, you know, you've got a, 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 you know, a decision to make, but it's an emotional decision in the end. And I agree. knowing that you are the you are part of, if not all of, you know, in her case, she's not the only product. I mean, she actually has a valuable product that's going to oh, help yes. people. Yes. But, but she is a part of that and she is the, the tip of that spear. Is the well, important her, she part. is the yeah. value proposition, right? That's it. Exactly. Because because yeah. those especially in this is these massive, uh, you know, projects that she sells into and these things she's involves for municipalities and everything else. It, it's just numbers, right? They, yeah. they are required by, oh, we have to take the we get three bids. We have to take the lowest bid. Right. But she is the one that that goes out and is is the face of of uh, what she's doing. And 
you know, to your point about that emotional decision, I, I, I really do agree with it. I always tell people, look, I, I'm a person, I'm personality driven. I could go buy this product or whatever it is. I, we, I recently went to a, a meeting or financial advisor that we use and they're making a transition and bringing in some new people and this kind of thing. And I told the new person, I said, look, I, I base my decisions here on your personality. I, I I can take this, you know, my financial stuff elsewhere and I, I it'll do just as good. Yep. There's no secret, no mystery. I know what you guys are doing. It's awesome. Uh, but I can, you know, I'm with Merrill Lynch, but I know I could go to mass mutual or I could go to Fidel or whatever, Doesn't you know, matter. there's other plenty of things. Right. Yeah. But if, but if you, if I feel like you are vested in my success and we have a good interaction back together and good, you know, uh, our personalities match up, it, it's going to be great. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's really, it's really important for me. Life's too short, man, to deal with people you don't enjoy hanging out with and yeah. talking to. Yeah. <laughs> it sucks. I don't want to do it. I'm not doing it. No, <laughs> no. no. It, well, especially in a scenario like that, there's no reason to, because like you said, there's, yeah. this is a valuable service. It is a profitable service for someone to do if they do it well. And there, so therefore there's competition in the market. You can pick a different person yeah. or company and, and, and most, you're good to go. Yeah. And most products and services are like that. I mean, if really, it, if, I mean, yeah, if it's know. something that's profitable for the people that are doing it, they will have competition. And, you know, as an aside, it's good to have people that compete with you in your business because it validates yeah. what you're doing. Like, that's not a bad thing. That's, it means, that's true. It yeah. means there's a bigger market to go after. If no one's yep. competing with you, you might have all the customers that exist. That's not so good. <laughs> like potentially, yeah, that's, that's unless point. unless you're really at the forefront and other people will follow. And that happens sometimes. And that's fine. But be self-aware enough to identify that. Yeah, you either have competition now or you're going to have competition if you're very successful, right? Yeah, or you're going to be out of business. Yeah, well, it's yeah. one of the three. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, no, for sure. All right, so the second part of this, uh, you know, simplicity talk here is to simplify the choices that you give your customers. Uh, I, if if you give your customers too many options, I think they they kind of just shut down and, it, and it's, it's too confusing for them. So you want to narrow down those choices that best serve them and your business, right? Uh, it's the, uh, we've talked about this, I think on the show before. If, if you look at, if you go to a restaurant and look at menus, there's all kinds of tricks that are used on menus to highlight what they want you to order. Right. They're pushing you towards the most profitable meal they sell, something that's maybe easier, you know, this kind of thing. Um, and the specials but, are often the things that they need to move the, the fastest yeah, too. Yeah, right. Of course. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, I think it's, there's some statistic like 60, most visitors to your website, they come up and they leave like in a, in a few seconds, right? The bounce rate somewhere around 60%. So 60 out of every hundred customers that come to your website to learn about your product, your service, your company, they leave quickly because they can't find what they're looking for. It, it, it's not there in the, in a simple manner. So you have this short, you know, time window here to connect with people and you just don't want to bombard them with uh, too much stuff, you know, using that restaurant, you know, example, again, you go to some of these places and I won't name any names, but um, you know, there's some kind of cheesecake involved. It, the, the menu is so big, they sell advertising in it. Oh, I know it's nuts. It's actually you know, kind of brilliant, like, but, but yeah, it I is understand. nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're obviously successful. Yeah. But I look and it's like, this is nuts, you know? Uh, but, I, but then on the flip side, you look at a, a, a restaurant or yeah, out here and on the West coast, we have in and out, which is a very well-known burger oh, yeah. joint, you know, yeah, it's fun place. And their menu, yeah. yeah. Their menu has just a handful of things on, you know, it's burgers, fries and drinks. That's it. And yep. you, you come up and you're quick and they're just pumping through, you know, it's a billion dollar, multi-billion dollar company uh, owned by a, you know, single person, one person and a limited menu, easy choices to make. I, I would say that's the way to go. You can certainly allow your customers to drill down more for those people that want to learn more. But when you first uh, come up to them, you know, what is the menu of services that you're offering and how can you simplify it? to where it's easy to digest quickly. Yeah. 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 How can you do it? Right. Yeah, That's it. I yeah. Know. Yeah. You have to think about it's It's, and it's so hard. It's hard to do because of the whole forest from the trees, you know, too much, right. To walk yeah. in, 
But it's also hard to accept that you might the choices that you made in terms of your website or, you know, in this case, your menu or whatever are not the best choices. And you need to kind of abandon them and make different, uh, you know, choose different options to to make it work better for your customers. And that can be hard, a hard pill to swallow, especially the first time. Once you've gone through it a few times, you're like, oh, I can't wait to change it and make it better. You know, but, yes. it, 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 you know, that a little bit of humility uh, especially if, you know, it's a business you've created and you kind of, you know, you sweated through it and it worked like that's the worst part is when, you know, you're like, well, but that website is the thing that brings me my customers. It's like, yeah, but if sure. you change it, it might bring you three times as many customers. But, right. You don't but know. It's you don't iterating. Know. Yeah. Right? Iterating. Iterating. A, right. B, a, B testing. Yeah. Trying out new things. I mean, you know, uh, I'm not sure if Johnny Ive is the one that said it, you know, Apple you know, d- designer, but it's, you know, design is, is removing things. Mm, yeah. Not necessarily adding things. Right. So what is the, you know, the core thing, the, the value add that for your customers and you may have, you may offer a ton of different things, but what is it when they first come to you uh, or, and they drill down within a particular section, if they need service or a certain product, how do you simplify it and and get them to uh, click that whatever button you want them to click or action you want them to take? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so the la- the last part, which is I, I'm I'm pretty uh, I'm a zealot about this, is simplifying internally inside your business. You know, when you keep your policies, your procedures simple. You're not only going to build more customer loyalty because the interaction with your everybody at your company is going to be easier, but you're going to create more loyal employees and a better company culture. And I, I, the reason I say that because I've done it both I've done it both ways. I failed miserably at it when I was younger when I thought I could be protected by terms and conditions. Hmm. And what, what, it, when, what do you mean when you say that? What I mean is, if if you want to grow, if you want to be successful, you've got to find out how your customers or what the problems are and solve them. And when problems come up after the sale, there is no term and condition that's going to, you know, cause the customer to go, oh, yeah, I clicked that button on your website and on page you know, 13 yeah, yeah, it yeah. said that if I did this, I'm not going to be able to do this or whatever. It doesn't work. As it, maybe it works for huge companies that are like, ah, we got 50 million. No, customers you're here. totally right. Well, it but, it's not a way to keep customers loyal and, no and it's not a fun position for an employee to Correct. have to be in. It's one thing if it's you, the business owner, and you're like, it's my business. I need to protect it. And this term is here because if I don't have it, I'll be out of business in a week. Right? I understand that. that. That's yes. fine. But when you ask your employees to own that and communicate that to people, that's a very different thing because they very quickly become on the side of the customer and there should never be two sides. But, if, you know, in that scenario, yeah. there are and your employees very quickly become like, uh, yeah, I, I like I empathize with these people. I feel, I, yeah, because they've been there. Yeah, We've all been there. Right. And you're just like, well, uh, look at this. And say, yeah, come on. Come you on. Know, Nobody it, wants to say that. And I've I've used no. that against people uh, yeah. like when I'm dealing with somebody on customer service. I'll say, look, I know this isn't your fault. You know, yes. like I know that that whoever wrote these policies didn't think about what you have to do right now in this moment. I know this sucks for you, too. And, right. you know, I mean, you definitely don't yeah, want it's your, a great way to do it's that. a great way to do it. But you definitely yeah. don't want to create a scenario where your soon to be former customers are saying that to your soon to be former employees. Like you, you want to set it up so that your employees feel proud to represent your company. Of course. And, and, yes, and, of course. And, yeah. Yeah. OK. Yeah. I, I, I get what you say. So, so what that's what I'm going this. with that. And the way we I or I made the shift is I, I I kept seeing us. Oh, you know, over over kind of ruling those uh, terms and conditions like, oh, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of sucks for that customer. Oh, let's do this. Let's do that. And And finally, I, I said, you know what? We're going to fix it. We are going to fix it. And if it's something, uh, you know, where the customer is so unhappy, but we keep, you know, hearing it, well, then we need to change what we're doing. It's like, oh, you know, this happens over and over again. Well, how do we fix it on the front end so we don't have this problem on the back end? And all on the, on the flip side of that, if there are certain customers that just are, you know, they seem they're so unhappy and you just can't seem to do anything right. Well, maybe that's not your customer. 
Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe right. you need to fire, maybe you need to fire that customer or not, not, uh, uh, go after that type of customer with our handbag business. We rarely get complaints from people that spend two or $3,000 on a, a bag versus someone that spends two or 300. You, you can just look at it. It's just a different type of customer. Um, so we focus our business on that higher end and we have less problems. And I guess in a nutshell, you know, 99% of the time, you're, Customers are going to be happy. Everything's going to work great. Do you, in, in those 1% problems, do you really want to make 99% of your customers go through the hassle of this and see this thing before they buy to solve those problems? I, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, probably. But not. I certainly, yeah. yeah, I mean, but I'm certainly, you know, tell me I'm wrong. I mean, send me, you know, a, a message feedback at businessshow.co and tell me, oh, hey, this is where. Uh, you know, our terms and conditions really saved us and this and that. And I understand when things get heavy, hot and heavy. And um, I, but- I have one scenario where I lean on them heavily, but it is a customer hostile scenario. It's this okay, weird sure. segment of our business where it's like you want a thing. It should be automated, but it's not. So we're dealing with people on it. It's a weird part of the business. If, quite frankly, I'm not even going to go into what it is because it's not okay. something it, it's like this is like super advanced. Um, you shouldn't be doing this with your business, but it's actually kind of an interesting sales training tool to deal with people in a way where you, like when they ask, it, it's this very compartmentalized part of our business. And when people ask us, like, can I have a discount? It's like our answer is definitively no, because it's practice for us when our real customers ask us that question, right? Like, mm, yeah. And and so with these people, we have like very strict terms and conditions and they will constantly ask to go out to color outside the lines. And we're like, no, you bought this and you read that email and this is all you get. You don't get any more than this. And it's super customer hostile. Like it's, yeah. it's backwards from everything I've ever done, but it's really been valuable for us to kind of see how that works because we're not customer hostile. And we sure. will bend, yeah, you know, yeah. we will bend over backwards for people. It's right. like, actually, you know, sometimes people are asking just because why shouldn't they ask if they can get a discount? Like they don't actually need it. It's not necessary for the sale. They're just asking because they're doing their due diligence. It's like and learning to kind of suss that stuff out has been very valuable for us. But that's the only scenario in our business where we like hold firm to terms and conditions. It's it's right. this very strange thing that we probably shouldn't be doing anyway. But it we find this this sort of, you know, haphazard value out of it that it's like, OK, if we can compartmentalize it and it's like an hour a week, this is great. So. Yeah. And, and I do, I understand there's outliers and yeah, situations for sure. You're going to have to do that. And, uh, you know, and, and I'd be you know, glad to dig down deeper. So, you know, let us know. I, I'd love some other examples of things that, that really help people, but I, I, I still come back to this, you know, your customer service policies should be brief, simple, and easy to convey to both your customers and your employees, right? Because right. then they're going to right. embrace them and they're going to feel better. Like we talked about, you know, uh, how they present it to the customer. Um, they're in both parties, customers and employees, they're going to trust you more when you have these kind of simple policies of, of uh, what we do, what we don't do. Uh, and it's better to be upfront. I mean, when we were in the, you know, business of repairing, you know, thousands of phones and hundreds of them were coming in the door every single day, there was often times where we would kind of, uh, push the phone back across the counter. We would call it, we had this kind of little symbol where you moved your hand across and say, Oh, Hey, we can't help you with this one. Because you, you learn to, to kind of yes. pre-qualify the customer up front. Yes. So if they have some crazy expectations that we're going to perform, you know, magic on this thing that's been, you know, uh, dumped in a toilet back then, you know, when phones weren't, uh, weren't waterproof, uh, yeah, waterproof, you know, that kind of thing, it's just not going to happen. Or they, you can't let the customer set the terms. And I'm not saying that, you know, you still have to protect your business and things, but um it, it, it's it's all how you go about to do it um, and how you get things. But I, I would say it's better to head it off um, and you look at your, your customers and see how to approach uh, where you're phasing, you know, or pushing your marketing towards. And maybe that's a different demographic. Um, but overall, you know, uh, my take on things is that by keeping things simple, 
you get your business up and running faster if you're at that stage. And that's critically important just to get started. You know, I hear it over and over and over again. You know, people say, oh, we've been working on this for years or this. And, you know, just get out there and get something going that you can see if you can make any money. Right. Um, and, you know, then to get out there and get, and get make more sales, build more customer loyalty, uh, you know, narrow down the choices to really focus on what's going to deliver a great experience to your customer then put more cash in your pocket. And then, you know, keep things simple to build a great company culture that your customer is going to have a great experience with. And you'll build, build this kind of virtuous cycle uh, of success. And, and you're going to have to constantly iterate on each aspect of that. You, you want to build this wheel and, and as you test and keep going, you want to see that, okay, we're, we're, we're doing better. Things are easier. We're making more money. And if somewhere along the way that stops, you want to be able to do it, to identify these simple things and make adjustments and just deal. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So. No, that I, I love that concept of pushing the phone back across the counter. Like that. What a, what a brilliant. It works. Yeah. Yeah. Very, yeah very like, oh, wait a minute. We're not the right place for you. Really, oh, yeah, what yeah. you're we saying is you're not the right that. customer yeah. for us. But yes, yeah, yeah in, a, that, in a in a, a good way. It's the hey, it's it's me, not you. <laughs> it's me, not you. Yeah, exactly. Right? It's, it's, uh, it's me. And when you're breaking up, you know, hey, it's us. You know, so yeah. Uh, and you do it in a friendly way. And and we had a list of people that we would refer to. Oh, go down the street and try these guys. They, you know, they they're miracle workers. And and uh, you know, so you can kind of get that get yeah. phrased out. So yeah, I, I would love to hear. You know examples of how you you have simplified your business um and we'd love to talk about it on the show feedback at businessshow.co would be awesome to hear from you yeah uh, yeah please argue with us it's good we, yeah. it's, it's good yep. for us <laughs> it is no yeah. and it's good for everybody we love to hear from you folks we love to be able to interact together it's it's what we uh it's what we do and we love to be able to help and we you know it's just we're a big community here uh, all of us here it's at stuff. the businessshow.co family. So, yeah, yeah, man. And speaking of help, you want to help us out, please go leave us a review. It really helps on all these podcast directories. Go to businessshow.co slash review. And once you've done that, if you own a small business, send us an email. Let us know you left us a review. And uh, we're going to pull some names out of the hat and give away some free advertising on the small business show. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's all we got, right? That's it. We're good. Thanks for hanging out, Dave. Yeah, thank you, man. This is, uh, it's always good stuff. I love when we get to get together. So thanks everybody for allowing us to make this happen. Keep on living that charmed life and we will see you next week. Next week.